Thank you, first of all, for having me here. It's really an honor and I'm grateful to have this opportunity to get my name and message out there. Things are a little tricky these days with campaigning during a pandemic. But a little bit about me, like Bill said, I am from Green Hills, I grew up there. And it's interesting because we talk about District 2 and folks will say it's the Eastern neighborhoods of Hamilton County. And I always remind people, nope, we have some of that central area too. Green Hills is included in District 2. So is New Burlington, Springfield Township, Wyoming, Finneytown, that whole chunk of the central part. So it is a lot of fun actually to have that in my district because to be able to represent them would be super amazing. And I would love to bring my energy to helping over there throughout our district really. But I am a high school English teacher is my background. I graduated in Miami in 99. So you can do the math how old I am. Some people think I'm a lot younger and worry about that, but no worries. I am now in Mount Washington. I have a 12 year old and a 10 year old. So they are home now doing the homeschool remote and we're balancing that. But I also have a small business sewing and I opened that when my kids were little and I was staying home to raise them, but I needed a creative outlet and just couldn't sit still really. But that business did really well. I did a lot of work for local restaurants, for Procter & Gamble, for Warner Brothers even. So that was something that really opened my eyes though, a lot of the struggles and hurdles that small businesses go through. I got to witness and that's been on the back burner as has teaching right now. Currently I work for Cincinnati Public Schools and that was my way of going back into teaching kind of a part-time way, building up to a full-time again. I work as a substitute. So I do preschool through 12th grade, all the specials, you know, gym, music, art. It's been actually a lot of fun. I concentrate mostly at Walnut Hills High School Hyde Park School and Washington, Mount Washington Elementary School, but I have done other schools as well. And that's also given me a lot of insight as to struggles uh, that folks are going through, the different um, levels of income that kids are coming from, the resources that the schools are working with or not working with, and just education in general needs a lot of support. So, this is what has been my life leading up into this. I never saw myself as running for Congress. You think of someone who does run for Congress and they have a certain kind of line that they travel in their life. Usually it's a political science or a law degree and they have those aspirations and ambitions because you really do have to be very ambitious. It's a lot of work. But for me, I was completely happy teaching and living my life. But back in November, when the impeachment hearings were happening. And really since 2016, I feel like people like me are paying attention closer now to politics. And we're seeing problems or we want change, but we're not doing anything about it. And when I witnessed the impeachment hearings, I was just really distraught. My friends and I were just turned off by the divisiveness and that drew to attention that Gwen Sterp did not have an opponent yet. And time was running out to file petitions to run. And for me, it's not a democracy if you don't have a choice. And I knew too that it's gonna be a presidential election year. It's gonna be an amazing turnout of voters and how sad to not have that choice. And because our district is very gerrymandered and because the census is happening and that's gonna redraw the districts is what many establishment Democrat candidate hopefuls are thinking. So a lot of people were just gonna wait a couple years and see how the districts got redrawn and perhaps it would be easier because that's their ambition. But for me, as just a regular voter and everyday person, I wanted a choice now. So, you know, we couldn't wait for someone just to show up. Sometimes you have to step up. So that's me and it has been a whirlwind and I knew it would be, but I never, ever, ever want to overthink it. I imagine someone working as a representative for District 2 as bringing so many resources and opportunity 
to this part of Ohio. It's actually a beautiful, beautiful land here. We have eight counties. Like I said, the eastern part of Hamilton and then that little central pocket, all of Claremont, all of Highland, Brown, Adams, Pike County, part of Ross, part of Scioto. And I got to travel throughout our district and it's beautiful. These towns, these small historic towns are beautiful and you get into the hills of Appalachia on our eastern portion. And I see all the potential. I got to Hillsboro, Chillicothe, Portsmouth, Piketown, and Piketon, and all places in between. But what I was seeing too was a lot of heartache and a lot of struggle and people that had been reaching out to our representative but weren't getting any results. So for me, this is a dream job to be an advocate to the people. Like I don't see myself, and this is what I've been told too, you know, if you lose, you're at least getting your name out there for your next race. And it's for me, that's not what I'm doing. I'm running in this race because this is the job I want. And it can happen. District one gets a lot of attention and it's seen as easier. And so they have tons of resources, national resources and district two is kind of, you know, under the radar, but I would not have done this if I didn't think that there was a chance and there is a chance. And it's interesting because right away, people were coming to help me, leaders, people who had run before, current elected officials, and they were helping and giving me advice. And AFTAB sat me down in January, we had tea, and he said, listen, anything can happen for good or for bad this year that is completely out of your control. For him, he was alluding to the caravans that came in and scared off a lot of folks and he lost that election. And for me, it's this pandemic, this social unrest. Nobody saw this coming. I mean, I knew campaigning would be interesting, but oh my goodness, it's just been, you know, I don't want to benefit from a pandemic, but I'm hoping that people's eyes are being opened. We need so many of these systems fixed or just completely reimagined. Our healthcare system is broken and even small businesses struggling because they're not having the support. If you go to Manchester, Ohio, Second Street is beautiful. It has these old gas lamps and that town's just falling apart. The plants shut down and no one was there to advocate for them. So I see myself as being like an ultimate cheerleader, but I'm gonna be fighting for these resources and I'm gonna be listening. I'll have town halls. I wanna protect the environment here our Ohio River is our drinking water, and we gotta keep that clean. We have a nuclear waste dump right outside of Piketon. People that live there live next to a nuclear waste dump. Who is looking out for them? They feel completely forgotten, and that's people in our district. So I just see so much that's needed, and I see this opportunity, and it all kind of fell into place for me. So it was too big to ignore, and I, again, I try not to overthink it. I'm just going for it but I'm seeing so much energy and support from folks in this district, first time voters and people in the suburbs that are now paying attention. I feel like I'm more relatable, like as an everyday person, I'm not a career politician. I will work across the aisle. I don't have that ego of, you know, staying partisan. So I'm hoping that that resonates with people as well. So do, do we want to take some immediate questions uh, about other issues or some of the other issues? Obviously, Jamie is running in a presidential year, in a congressional and senatorial year, where all the issues of, of, the, of the country are up, up for grabs. And so one question I have just to start off, Jamie, um, right now we have a divided House and Senate in, in Washington. And so the, the House has done a, a number of things. A couple of years ago, they passed a very good bill on campaign reform. Uh, as, as some of you know, I, I've been an advocate for public financing and various ways to cut down on the huge amount of money going into campaigns. That, Politicians often have to spend three quarters of their time getting uh, 
big dollars for, for their campaigns. This bill passed, I guess, in, yeah, in 2019, and never saw the light of day in the Senate, was uh, very good in terms of, of, of both redistricting reform, voting rights, and it had, a, it had some public financing for people running for the House of Representatives or the Senate. Um, would you support this kind of bill, Jamie? Oh, yes. Um, it's interesting. You know, I've learned so much this year about how politics work. And I joke about how glamorous my life is now that I spend 30 hours a week cold calling nationwide folks for money. <laughs> it's awful. And, you know, House of Representatives is a two year term. So you keep having to do that. And it's ridiculous. The whole Citizens United is a joke as well. How can a company be a person? There needs to be term limits, I think, on both sides of Congress. I am completely for that. Like I said, I'm not in this for my career or ego. I see it as an opportunity to do public service of a grand scale. And that's what all these folks should be doing. It shouldn't be you're there for so long for decades and then you have all this accumulated power because nothing's getting done. I mean, there are folks on both parties that have just been there for so long and they have their fractions that work with them, but it gets to this point where they're fighting against each other all the time. And there's so many good house bills right now dying in the Senate. And, you know, we've got to change the Senate to, st to change that. It's, yeah, it's really frustrating. And I'm all for all sorts of campaign finance reform, I think that would make it so much more fair. And I see it also as a privilege to run for office. My husband makes enough financially that I can do this. A lot of people would have to have a full-time job because I don't get paid running for Congress and it's a full-time job. So only certain people can do this. If you are a single mother and you, know, you have to work to support, I don't see how they can run for office. And it's sad because those voices are very important to be at the table when so much important legislation is being drafted. So that would be another thing that would open up folks to be able to run for office. Great, other, other questions?